Good morning. We are live with about two minutes to go. Welcome to this morning's Maranatha live from our house to your house, church. See you in a We're two minutes late now. I was thinking a few moments ago, and even now, actually, my dad in glory will be, along with lots of other people who love timekeepers, thrilled by the fact that over um nearly five years now we've been almost exactly well we didn't start like this let's say four of those years exactly one hour long for the whole thing um he became more and more and more keen on oh look at it time's up time's up everyone go i've got a coat on i'm off um so there we go so that's for you dad so i hope you're all doing okay uh thanks for asking and praying for us um it's it's uh impossible except for the lord and with the lord it's not impossible and he can make us more than conquerors and he has done that so that we can smile at the storm we can actually smile at the storm and you should be able to do that too so what have we got today with this lovely couple here where have all the flowers gone where have all the flowers gone tell me what you're thinking of right now darling it's a song it's a song by who good morning mum not by Good Morning Mum, but actually, you know, uh, I don't know who it was by. It's 60s, what? 70s. Well, it written is. in, does anyone know what year it was written in? 1955. That's correct. Really? When did you know that? Did you know that? Or oh, Andrew, did you know? I, I don't know. Um, 1955 by Peter Seeger, um, who died maybe 10 years ago, a folk singer, got a bit cross with Bob Dylan. Uh, at one point, um, and legend says that he got a hatchet out uh, to cut the cable of the electric guitar. Um, because, you know, people love their traditions, and folk music must be without electricity or else. Uh, but he sang this uh, classic, famous um, anti war song. And you think we have the First War, the Second World War, you think that's got to be the end of it, it's got to be the end of it. And then there was the various wars that have proceeded from then on, and through the, the 50s, you've got the Korean War, you've got Vietnam, um, uh, Pete Seeger was an American, all the anti-war protests. You think back, look back now to uh, Green and Common and the, um, the, uh, the uh, nuclear disarmament movement that went on, Songs like this were very special, where I remember singing this in music class um, in a round or something like that, and the, the teacher, who would have been definitely from that period, um, along with tubular bells and a few other things that are a little bit more modern, getting us to sing or to try and play and join in. I had a triangle. In fact, we all had triangles. <laughs> in fact, that was the only instrument that was available oh, back in the day. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Anyway, where have all the flowers gone? Long time passing. When will... Remember the next line? When will they ever learn? Oh, yeah, when will they ever learn? Yeah, when will they ever learn? Okay, so we go today Ooh. to this triplet. Uh, they all rang up. We've got Zelensky, Musk, and Trump. They rang up and said, we've heard legends about the podcast, and we understand that this is in Maranatha House Church as well. And I went, there it is. Um, and we're excited about this podcast. Uh, Lawrence, who chairs the whole thing, sent through a little post last night that 10,000 views have taken place about the advert, which is, you know, frankly, a little bit more than our average take up. So we're, we're saying thank you, Lord, for that. And thank you to the Lord for people like Lawrence, who have some ability on the old computer. I think that's what it's called. Um, there's a lot going on in the world at the moment. Um, I'm trusting in the Lord, I'm trusting in the Lord, I'm not worried by any storm, not worried of what's going on. But it's incredible, this um, massive landslide that's gone in one direction. And it's not, I would say, towards the far right. It's a, it's a reaction, at least, to the, I would say, the lunatic left. No, everyone, is, you know, I have some leftish tendencies and some liberal tendencies and some you know, tendencies in different areas, there's elements in all branches of politics uh, and of understanding of all things. You think, well, that's, that's a good bit. Let's not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take what's good and throw away what's bad. I don't know whether that's just blown. That'd be interesting if that light was just gone. 
Um, let's just see if it has. Sorry, pause while we... Oh, yeah. Well, I think you might have. Well, we'll see. We'll wait and see. Um, that's good. Guaranteed only used a few times. So, it's interesting that's on the right, but if I stand there, it's on the left. So, there we go. They rang up. They said, can we join in? I said, you're very welcome indeed. This is the day we're on. We have covered... We haven't got 1,274 days to go until Israel turns 80. I think this is of significance. Like when they turned 70, we mark that. Six years ago, we did a countdown to that point there. Um, now we're doing a countdown to the days when Israel turns to 80 years old, 1,274 days. Nothing probably going to happen. But according to the scriptures, things happen when there's a fullness of days. And uh, we're meant to know the season that we're living in. And a season is as vague as 1,274 days away. What date would that be, darling? That would be the 14th of May, 2028. And um, there's a significance to dates in the Bible. I'm not a date setter. I'm curious. And the Bible and the Lord tells us that as we know the seasons of the year, it's autumnal, edging into winter. We, you know, it's not rocket science that it shouldn't be rocket science and it isn't rocket science. It's far more important to know the season that we're living in in the world. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. We press the button on the 17th of November. Wow, where's all the time gone? Where have all those flowers gone? Well, actually, I chopped them all out the back garden just the other day with the streamer. Um, Heather knows about that, and maybe we'll show you a picture later on. Lord God, we do pray as we delve into your word today on four or five reasons for something happening. We pray, in fact, four or five reasons as to where have all the flowers gone? Is it this? Is it that? Is it this? Is it that? Or is it that? Lord, help us to understand. And we pray that you'd be with each of us out there. Bless us, we pray. We need your help. We need your Holy Spirit within our lives to empower us to get through another day. I pray for your blessing on our dear daughter and our dear husband, upon our dear family, and upon all the dear families out there, our friends and our families upon those that we know and we do love. We love everyone out there, Lord. We we love, as it were, the left and the right. We love all people. We pray, Lord, for Kamala still and Joseph Biden. We pray for um, Milana and um, Donald. We pray for um, Tim Waltz. We pray for Keir Stammer. We pray for Tony Blair. No one ever prays for Tony Blair. We pray, Lord, for... Um, characters that we appreciate and characters that we don't appreciate so much and we want each and every person to come to know you we pray for Zelensky we pray for Elon Musk there are lots of things which are, are real alarm bells with all of these characters in, in a bad way they all need to be saved and without you they're in a very dangerous place but you raise up people for a purpose and for a time and we trust in you your purpose and the time and help us not to fight against you and not to speak wrongly concerning what you're up to in this world help us to discern between what is of you and what is allowed by you and what perhaps is the twisted ways of the evil one that will help us to understand we pray for your blessing all the different churches around about a particular Maranatha today with the baptism, pray for your blessing on them. And for us, as we gather here tonight, 7.30 until 9.30, thank you for this special time of fellowship that we enjoy. And we pray that um, maybe a new person will come along tonight. We just commit that all into your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What have we got? All right, it's time for some songs. We like your singing, Heather. Okay, well, we'll start off on the piano, yep. and then we'll... I think move to something else. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. We all haven't planned to do this one. Let's do this one, shall we? Might be a little bit like that today. A little bit unpredictable. Okay, give us a number. One, two, six, seven. Come, people of the risen king. Okay, that's. I write that one, down because I didn't have that on my list. One, two, six, seven. Yeah. One, two. Thank you. 
Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Star of grace from the shifting shadows of the earth, we will lift our eyes. Got there at the end. It's a good song. Let's do five five nine. Praise him. Praise him. Ooh. It's one of my favourite oldies. Okay. Move up a little bit high. I I can sure it's gonna to be too high. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer, sing all worth his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory, strength and honor, give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children in his Arms, he carries them all along. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him, every joyful song. Good song, Annie Crosby. Nice, good one. Yeah. Five five nine. Five five nine. Whatever that one was, we're not doing it. Let's do five six six. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. In him. Will I trust? Praise the name of Jesus. Good. Okay, Good. and then I've got a couple on oh, there. A couple over there. Go for it. Okay, should we leave yep, everybody that's up fine. there? All right, it is. Let's do 1058. Just to make sure that still connected. Connected. Yeah. That's good. One thousand fifty. Holy, holy, holy. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Hide me now. Just a little quiet one. Remember this one? No. Yes. Song. Yeah. Try to mix it up. Yeah, a bit. You mix it up. Mix it You're up. You're a mixer. I'm just going to come off. See, so don't lose it. Do something dramatic there. We don't want that to happen. It's all for a disconnected. Okay. There we go. All right, it's going to pick everybody up. Oh. Up the sky. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. One of the things that came to my mind, which we're going to pray about right now, a lot of people would have seen about these floods in Spain and now in Portugal. There have been some terrible storms and some tremendous floods. You see some of the video footage of the water, um, you know, like a, like a fast flowing river coming down streets and washing away cars and all this. And I was praying and thinking about this, more thinking, I'm afraid, than praying. And I stumbled upon a piece of news, which is extraordinary, extraordinary as to why these things happen. Um, why are there troubles in this world? Well, it's because of what we're up to and the consequences of it. Do you find it extraordinary that in 2020 and 2021, those are the two figures I saw, over 200 dams were removed in Spain, I don't, I don't know about Portugal, but 200 dams were removed. That's, it's going to do something. They were there for a reason. They were there for many, 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 many years doing something. And there was some uh, environmental um, uh, edict from the European Union about the removing these dams. And they took these dams down to return them to the wild. And, you know, we, we build where we're not meant to build. And then the storm comes. We alter the course of the, the water so that it goes elsewhere or that it's held back and that it's released gently. And then we just take everything down and we expect everything to continue. So the answer to these storms, for instance, isn't as simple as, well, you know, cows and cars 
It's, it's ridiculous. So there we go. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Lord, there have been a lot of things that have gone on in this last week, and we just bring those things to you. And, and lots of people have lost their lives. I think mm. 200 plus people have lost their lives. And in North Carolina as well, we remember there is going to be so many people that are still without houses, that are living with friends and family and neighbors and are being put up by the government. We do pray that the governments of the world and the rest of us would play our part in helping one another. We would truly love one another. We do pray, Lord, for our own government. We pray for the governments of the world. We pray for the Prince of Peace to come again. We understand the, the world that we're living in to a measure. And we pray that you'd help us to understand it a little bit more. And we pray that you'd speak to us today, that we'd understand from your word what you're saying to us concerning where have all the flowers gone? And when will they ever learn? There was Peter, Paul, and Mary back in 68 or 72 or something like that sang that song and made it perhaps more famous. And we, we, we see that these protests against wars, but wars continue until the end. The desolations continue until the end. Exactly what the scriptures say happened, but help us to be men and women of peace following the prince of peace we pray lord that you'd be with us today and speak into our hearts and our lives and bring peace into many situations which are listed even here some of them on our screen we pray lord for peace in america we pray lord for sensible choices to be made we pray lord that evil men and women would be punished and righteousness would prevail that there would be a readdressing of values and truth that truth that is found in the scripture all around the world we thank you that that will one day come to pass we pray that you give preachers today exactly the words to share from the pulpits of the land here and in um, different countries all the countries around the world where people are waking up and people are going to bed we pray that this would be the day that the Lord has made and we would all rejoice, your church would rejoice and be glad in it. Mm. And we want to just simply join together, to bring these th things together and saying the Lord's Prayer. We say, Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Say good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Fran. Good morning, Emma, if you're still there. Good morning. I hope, are you at our hospital now, Emma? Uh, we've been praying for you. We're on day 1700, oh. a round number. I like round numbers. Why do we like round numbers? It feels like a completion of something. Day 1700, it feels like it. Oh, I haven't managed to shave this morning. Ooh. Yes, has a, an automatically zooms in. Fantastic. 243 weeks, 4.7 years. Here's a good verse. We had it last week and a different version. For the battle is not yours, but God's. From 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15. That's in the New International Version. Just a version of the Bible written in a way for... Um, different points in history so that we'd understand it more clearly. There we go. We're going to break some bread. That's what we're going to do right now. You bring that table over here. I can do that. Well, so I guess this is 1700 times we have. We can't. No, it's days. That's days. 200. I was thinking, can't no, be. Can't be. <laughs> can't be. That's means we're about 150. 243 times in this manner we've taken some bread and we are remembering the Lord's death until he comes again. Think of that night that we believe it was a Thursday night. Um, they wouldn't have called it, called it Thursday. 
and it was dark and the Lord Jesus he took some bread after he washed his disciples feet he took some bread and he broke it and he said this is my body given for you take eat this and do this in remembrance of me he was on his way to the cross he knew exactly what was about to happen everything was going to unfold in a way which was entirely predictable and known by him wow um they had no idea they had no idea but now they do and now we do and we remember and we say thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus for your body represented here in this bread which was given for us we, we value our bodies um we're sad as we get older and we wear out and our eyesight and our limbs and our bones and our everything aches in a different way uh, we asked our grandchildren yesterday um in fact the postman did um are you all achy and they said no not at all um it was really funny um lord thank you that for each and every one of us there is newness coming newness coming as we trust in you and we trust in you lord trust in you in jesus name amen amen if you've got a bit of bread take it now and say thank you to the lord Good to thank the Lord. If you're still pondering all these things and you're not sure about it yet, you think, oh, this is for Heather and John, and but I, I like them. Well, I like Heather, but John's kind of okay. Um, and if you're just not sure of these things, ask God to help you to be sure of these things. Um, I don't know whether we can help you be sure of these things, but the Lord can. God can, and he wants you to be sure of these things, to know what they mean, and to know the significance to you in your life. The Lord had taken some bread and he took some wine. And he poured it out and he said, this is like a picture of my blood. This is a, this is the wine of the new covenant. This is the new, the new beginning. The old is going. The new is just about to come. As he poured out that wine, he took that wine. He knew what was going to happen to him. And it did. It happened to him in a few short hours. He was going to say, it is finished. What a relief that must have been. It is finished. To be able to give himself back to God. He, he finished the race. Like going over that finishing line, completely exhausted, completely used up for us, poured out for us. And we say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for our sins. Thank you for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the simplicity of this and a little bit of food as a reminder of the Passover being completed in the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> okay, what have we got? What have we got? We have a psalm. What psalm are we on today? 11. 113. Oh, yeah, you changed it just in the nick of time. I love this picture here. This word here, the majesty and condescension of God. This word, if you Google it, only comes up as a negative it's like a condescending look of someone god from the pinnacle where there is actually nothing beneath him that isn't created he is the creator he's in in a place of his own the creator of the universe 
everything he is, everything he does, everything he thinks, his character in all of its fullness, everything is in a is is separate, is godly, and then there's created, and so much of it is dirty. He alone this word in this manner works he condescends to come down and to lift us up he reaches down we're completely unworthy he reaches down and he picks us up he doesn't say oh you're good enough you're good enough you're good enough he reaches down into the dirt nowhere in the dirt and that he will lift us up and you're going what me he'll pick me up yeah this is it this is so this picture this this character here just going Wow, wow, absolutely amazing. Okay, from the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Heather, would you like to go for it? Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. Mm -hmm. The Lord is high above all nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God who dwells on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and in the earth. He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap, that he may seat him with princes, with the princes of his people. Mm. He grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Yeah, excellent song. Love it. Okay, uh, we approve of this. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? There are a strange old thing there. We don't approve of what's on your mind, Mrs. Brain, and no one approves what's on my mind. But what's on my mind this week? What's on your mind? A new section that we've got. Oh, so I've not revealed that. to Heather. What's actually on my mind? We're not going to talk about but what's on my mind? Well, this is on my mind. What's on my mind? And therefore, heart that I believe is being underlined by God. Nice little succinct statement there. What do you feel that God has put on my heart? Well, it's this little bit here. Daniel started to fast, presumably for as long as needed, which turned into 21 days, based solely on reading that 70 years was the time of the length for the captivity of his people stuck in Babylon. He read something in the Bible and it affected everything. It was something really positive, something amazing. He stumbled not by accident, but because he was diligently looking to understand what God might put onto him. And God put onto him something which not just transformed his life, when Michael the archangel stepped in remarkably, brought Daniel to a place of fasting, but also um, transforms our lives as well. This is something which is really, really important. When the bridegroom is gone, then my disciples will fast. Jesus speaks about us fasting when he's gone. He's been gone for 2,000 years. Have we fasted yet? That'd be a bit of an embarrassment, wouldn't it? If we've never fasted as Christians, and he's been gone for 2,000 years. It's like, okay, this would be known as a big error of judgment, big big mistake to never fast when, if we want to call us, ourselves one of his disciples, so let's seek the Lord concerning this. Let's seek the Lord concerning this. That's what's in my heart. That's what God has underlined. Let's pray. Lord, we see the time, 9.37 on our small, discreet little display over there, and we pray that you'd speak to us this morning. We want to hear specifically what you have to say to us concerning this particular matter that you've laid on my heart uh, even over the last few days. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I am excited about a number of things. I'm excited about looking at Philadelphia again because I want to be Philadelphia. I don't want to be Sardis. I don't want to be Pergamon. I don't want to be one of the other ones. Uh, I'm, I don't want to be Ephesus. I, don't, I want to, don't want to have lost my first love. I'd love to be Philadelphia. We're going to get back to that, I think, sooner or later. That'll be the third time we've looked at these things. But today, where have all the flowers gone, Heath? Where have all the flowers gone? So in that back garden, we have, we have, we're, we've, we're not going to go down there. We're not going to go down and show you yet. We're going to show you what is finished. But when it's finished, you'll go, oh, it's nice. 
the devastation that takes place in the meantime. But you know what? There is devastation for this world. There's been devastation. There will continue to be devastation. There's suffering that's gone on since the beginning. You know, what was the first thing to suffer? The lamb, a lamb oh, yeah. was killed, was taken by the Lord himself and was killed in front of Adam and Eve and turned into clothing for them. And they were, whoa, whoa, there's blood everywhere. Well, what is that? You know, what is this? Wow, they saw death. They felt it. And then they saw it. They, then they, they were covered with death and it brought them, as it were, life. They brought them a, a rejoining together by faith in in and through Christ. Ultimately, it's, you know that's that's the reality. Where have all the flowers gone? Basically, what's this about? Suffering. There's a picture here. I typed in the word suffering. I've been thinking about this suffering. And uh, there's a guy there sat on a bench, and um, I typed in suffering. And this is the picture that came up. The first one that came up. And you see someone sat on a bench with their head in their hands. Well, there would be a few reasons for it, and none of them are any good. It could just be tired, you're saying, yeah, but but it's probably some form of suffering that's got the better of this person. So I thought we need to look at this because we're going through some suffering, you know, by proxy with our dear daughter, we're praying for all the time. Thank you for your prayers for us as a family and especially for Millie and for Nick, for the children. For us all as a whole, for for Isaac and Rhoda, we, we need your prayers. Um, we are in a place of suffering in lots of ways, but we're trusting in the Lord. We're trusting in the Lord. So we haven't got our head in the hands all the time. But can you imagine that Heather or I have ever had my our head in our hands? Yeah. Yeah, multiple times sat on these chairs here in the car just going, Lord, this is really hard going. This is really hard. Help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Get us through this. Get us through another day. And you wake up in the morning and you think, oh, no, it's not another day. I felt like that. Have you ever felt like that? Not another day. Oh, no, the sun is rising. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun to the rising of the sun, his name is to be praised. Praise the name of God. When things are really rough, praise the name of God. Why wouldn't you do that? You know, rejoice in all things. Rejoice in suffering. Can you do that? Is it possible to do that? Rejoice in suffering. Why? Not because of the suffering, but because actually Jesus spoke about, and some of the disciples spoke about, being counted worthy to suffer. If you're suffering for good reasons, if you're suffering for bad reasons, you're suffering because you sinned, well, you know, oops. But if you're suffering for good reasons, are there any good reasons to suffer? Well, we may go on to that today. I think we will. So what have we got here? Why is there suffering, Heather? Give me an answer that is answered by the world. What's the first answer? Why do people suffer? Mm. Bad stuff happens. Yeah, I mean, we got here, nice little description here. Uh, I typed in, why is there suffering? And AI, which seems to give us all the answers, the answers now, there, yeah. just sums yeah. it all up. So this is the artificial intelligence answer for why they're suffering. Hello. Humans evolved to suffer in certain situations, such as loss of loved ones, social rejection, or lack of food or water. Suffering can motivate people to change their behavior to increase their chances of survival. I mean, you know, I mean, I, what... Like, yeah, I mean, there's some hope. So this guy, you're walking on the road, and you come along, and you see me sat there, I've got my head in my hands, and you say, I'm here to help, and then you say that to me. <sighs> Stop it. Stop it. Don't do it. So with that one, we press the button. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. Mm. Do you know where it goes? So what, what, what else we got here? Oh, 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 oh. One. We're starting at the bottom. The original... Sin, or original sin, or the origin of sin, or the original sin, the first rung of the land. Let's see what it says. Romans chapter, what does it say, darling? 8.22. There it is here, 8.22. Can you remember what it says? Give me the first word. 
Then 22, four. Four of sin and four short. Of, no, that's three something. We know no. that the whole world creation groans and labours with birth pains together until now. <laughs> yeah, do you want to zoom in on that there? Can you get that? It'll go out. All right. So, yeah. Oh, there we go. For we know. Yeah. Um, so, uh, mm -hmm. reasons for suffering. Here is a first reason for suffering. We're doing these in an unusual order. This is the order that I want to do them in, okay? For we know that the whole creation, the whole creation, what does that encompass? Uh, flowers and trees and people and birds and bees and puppies. Anyone ever lost a pet? Just tear jerking. You know, just I was talking to a dear friend the other day, lost his cat. It's just really an emotional thing. 22 years. It's a long time. Half of their life they, they lost their cat after all those years. It's a big, big deal. Okay, we know that the whole creation, everything, everywhere, I got a car there, and I, I, it was in really good nick, but it's, there are bits, when I put my really good glasses on, I see, I take these ones off, oh, it looks a whole lot better. I put them on, I go, oh, I wish it was in a garage. It would be kept in far better condition. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs. It's like it's ready to be born anew. We're going to get to that ready to be born anew original sin suffering the whole of creation groans a reason a reason perhaps the first reason why there is suffering in this world is because the whole of creation has been under a curse since sin came into the world and needs to be saved and needs to be made new behold i make all things new one day it labors ready to be born again you've got to be born again the creation has got to be born again it's as simple as that what's the second thing here where's it going to go oh it's up here on this second row sin what does it say here john chapter 5 verse 14 14 whoops john chapter 5 verse 14 do you know what the story is darling a man healed at the pool of Bethesda. Nice. Let me read a little bit to you. Um, he answered, He who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? This is the religious people, the Pharisees, going, Why are you carrying a bed on the Sabbath? That's all they were concerned about. Not that this man who'd been there for how many years? 38. Yeah. 38 years he'd been there and they're more concerned about carrying his mattress okay that is religion for you do i want to ban religion no nah, just mock it a bit mock it a bit you know but walk away from it don't even spend any time on it. get right with christ get right with christ take up your bed and walk but the one who was healed did not know who it was for jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. He, he'd healed this man kind of on the sly, secretly. Incredible. Some would have noticed. And then he slipped away to one place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple. That's good news. And said to him, see, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Clear indication that suffering could come from sin. Jesus indicates in this story that this man had been ill for 38 years because, I believe, of a sin that he committed back in the day. How old is he now? I mean, it's going to be, I don't know, 50 or 60 years old? When he was in his teens or early 20s he sinned what did he do we're not told that jesus says don't sin anymore sin can lead and does lead to suffering the, the whole of creation grows because of sin reaching out taking an apple by deception and stupidity and uh, by uh, willful ignorance going oh, i'll buy into it as well adam 
what could go wrong what were they thinking sin leads to suffering okay there's original um the whole of creation groans and then there's sin if you if you sin you will in one way or another cause suffering this young man he could be sat here because he sinned yesterday or in the morning or a few days before or he's um wrapped up in the consequences of someone else's sin or a family sin sin causes suffering at least two reasons what's the third one what do you reckon we're gonna go for Heath? what could it be here it is here third one God's revelation oh let me just grab my bible just through here chapter nine i like the book of john yes. chapter nine you know what this one's going to be yeah. chapter nine verse three now as jesus passed by he saw a man who was blind from birth um we say oh why is there suffering in little children so we say that what well, they haven't done anything wrong this man was blind from birth and his disciples asked him saying rabbi who sinned this man well from birth you know that's a weird thing to say or his parents mm, that's not such a weird thing to say um that he was born blind jesus answered and said neither now there was no sin going on here what that led to this blindness but that the works of god should be revealed what in him. in him in him the works not over there not in my life but in him in him in and through him in him for his benefit maybe that he would get saved that his soul would be saved Going, well, I can see, I've never ever seen before. I'm seeing for the first time. Remember in the book of Job, what Job says right at the end, I've heard, it's like I've been blind all my life, and now I can see. There's a revelation. I love that. It's so encouraging. That these other two, oh, oh, this one here. You know, this this one here is like oh it's everywhere this one here is okay you know buck up your ideas sort your life out stop heading in that direction change the direction you're going in repent of your sins turn to the lord and walk in this direction from now on with all your heart this one here is i don't know what's going on wow there's an incredible miracle that's taking place and the disciples and this man here's that it's so that he really does believe there's a revealing it's not just seeing trees and people in his family and his friends and jesus the first thing he sees is jesus i mean i've never thought about that before until that moment the first thing he sees is Jesus. wonderful 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 revelation chapter three uh chapter nine verse three What's the next one? Where's it going to go? I think it's going to go just there. Uh, chapter four. Glory. It's not chapter four. We get the next. Oh, I am. Um, it's uh, number four, and it's not Revelation nine verse three. The Revelation was John nine verse three. Thank you. Okay. Uh, this one's now Glory. John uh, eleven four. John eleven four. Uh, thank you. Lazarus. Yeah. Oh, you're right. What what bit am I going to turn to? Eleven. Uh, oh look at this glory Do you know that that one the last one there revelation to the person um uh, in that psalm 113 it's glory to god glory to god now a certain man was sick lazarus of bethany just a couple of miles outside of jerusalem the town of mary and her sister martha and it was that mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, and you remember, if you've ever read the rest of the story, Lazarus ends up dying. 
And Jesus raises him from the dead because of this here. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death. It means something more than that, doesn't it? But for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Sometimes there is suffering and there's tears. This is the same story. I've got it here where it says, verse 35. What does verse 35 say? The shortest verse of the Bible. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. This is proper crying, more crying than we've probably ever felt before, more heartfelt pain. You think, well, no one's ever cried like I've cried. Uh, yeah. Lots of people probably. You think of the most pain that you could feel. Jesus wept, wept. This was for the glory of Jesus. This happened. Don't even mention some years later, Lazarus dying. You know, we can read on and we can see that the wicked men, women that were there, some of them plotted to kill Jesus and Lazarus. Well, that's not going to work, is it? It's not going to work. We've remembered his death until he comes again. Be ready to meet Jesus. For the glory of God will be revealed and we'll see him. He is coming back again before too long We're, i'm ready to see him i'm really ready to see him what is the fifth one hmm. what is the fifth one i don't know well it is this one here have you done uh, okay this yeah. is good i'm enjoying this yeah good morning if you just joined this good morning andrew i don't know if i said good morning to you Good this is this is really really important this is really important there are these these reasons maybe there's another reason maybe there's another reason i don't know at the moment these are the reasons i've believed in and feel uh, plainly there for suffering in this world not this stupid evolutionary nonsense survival the fit is just the way that it is get over it I hate all that. I don't believe in it. It's not true. It's, it's a misinterpretation. It's a, it's a twisted lie of the evil one. There's, there are elements in there which are true, but it's not the truth. Remember the story of Eliphaz. You want the whole truth and nothing but the truth. We've got original sin. We've got the groaning of the planet. We've got suffering can sometimes play, take place because of the sin of the person. You sin. The soul that sins dies, you know, in the broader sense of the word. If you don't sin, you won't die. Guaranteed fact, the person who's never sinned will never die. You just don't die. You won't suffer. You won't get old. Nothing will happen. And actually everyone has fallen to that. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And suffering takes place as a result of that. Jesus says to the man there, go and sin no more, lest something worse happens to you. Well, worse than 38 years? Wow. And is that possible? Yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. Repent, turn to the Lord. Revelation into the individual. Eyes open. Wow. Revelation at the end of Job. Wow. And for this person, they, they suddenly see and they can see the Lord. Wow. They can see people and they can enjoy life in that much of its, more of its fullness. I bet that young man's eyesight was ace. And my eyesight is not ace, but I bet his eyesight was fantastic. I bet the joy, the smile restored his smile. I bet this guy hadn't smiled as much, but he couldn't stop smiling. When I got my motorbike for the first time and I drove off down the road, I couldn't stop smiling. Now I can't stop getting flies out of my teeth. Um, but it was just great. I thought, man, I can't stop grinning. It was such fun. Brilliant. And so, so I don't go on too often. I'm going to recapture some of that moment. For revelation, for glory, glory of Jesus. It's always been about him. It's all about him, the glory of Jesus. Don't take his name in vain. He will not hold you guiltless who takes his name in vain. We're guilty if we say Jesus, if we say Christ, if we say, oh, my God, as a swear word. He is our God. We're to honor him. We're to get on our knees and say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Have you done that? And then lastly, which we've been going through, the book of Job. 
Suffering can take place because God, as he's looking around the world, he spies those whom he knows won't throw in the towel and won't be angry with God and will continue to hold fast to their integrity and God will deliver them probably at the last moment from all of their suffering into a brand new newness of life. Have you considered five reasons, five reasons. Last one, slightly more difficult to grapple with perhaps than the rest. What have we got here? We got it here. Uh, how long, how long is this suffering going on for? Well, we've got this here. Now I saw a new heaven and new earth. For the first heaven and first earth had passed away. Heather. Also there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away yeah. every tear from their eyes. Yeah. There shall be no more death, yeah. no sorrow, no crying. Yeah. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed yeah. away. Suffering isn't forever. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Mm. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit mm. all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Stop there. Okay, really, 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 really good news is around the corner. Re suffering will come to an end but not for everyone and in this reading we got a dire warning we've got a wonderful encouragement of hope and revelation and glory and release and splendor without end in a new heaven and a new earth when all things are made new do you want that? If you want that, you need to get on your knees and make sure you're going to be getting that by trusting in Christ alone or else. But the cowardly, 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 yeah. think about it, the cowardly, cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, well, I'm not that, abominable, murderers. You hate your brother, you hate anyone? Murderers. Sex being sexually immoral? Who hasn't? Or no? Sorcerers. Ever been to a soothsayer, to a medium? You need to repent. Idolaters. Loved anything more than God? Yep. And or ever told one lie? To have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay. We've got to, we've got to end with that. If you want suffering to have a conclusion, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Let me pray for you right now. We're going to ask the Lord to make sure that you and I, that we are all saved of our sins. Lord God in heaven, we do pray that you would forgive us for our sins. Please cleanse us from all of our sins, from the smallest little lie to all of the other things, from being cowards, from being idolaters, all of these things, all of our sins, would you wash them all away and remember them no more? Please don't remember my sins anymore. Take them all away. Take them all away. Cover them in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Make them all be paid for in all their fullness. Forgive me for all of my sins, a whole lot. Make me brand new and born again so that I can know at the very least an end to suffering one day and enter into a place where all things are made new and that all the tears are wiped away. There'll be no more death and suffering and pain. Nothing like that anymore, ever again. The thought of going down and missing out will be unforgivable. But right now, we can be forgiven for all of our sins and 
Uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God's blessing surround you each day as you trust him and walk in his way. May his presence within God and keep you and me from sin. Go in joy, go in peace, go in love. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance as it were gaze upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And good morning, Jackie. Hey, good Jackie. Morning. God bless you all. Thanks to everyone for your prayers. Could we'll be Philadelphia next week. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Possibly. See you next week. Yeah, God bless you. Big Bye. love.